Hello, good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Hello, Good morning. Hope everyone's having a great day today. As we get close to finishing week 13, we're in unit four, focusing on music this week. We have a song today. In fact, this song was recommended by Jazz. We're going to begin by listening to the song, doing a little activity with the song, with the lyrics. Then we'll spend the rest of today finishing our interview. Some of you, many of you have been sending me uh, emails or chat mails or messages uh, to look at your guide. And I would recommend that uh, if you haven't already, and let me know when you have completed it so we can take a look at it. Um, I will probably share a few because I think most of you have the idea after seeing an example yesterday in class. If you want to see that example, you can look at yesterday's recording. And there's a time stamp, there's a link under the description that if you click on it, I think it says 42 minutes or something, it goes directly to the example. You don't have to watch the whole video to find where I talk about and show an example of how to create an outline, an interview guide as an outline from your musical concept statement. Remember those statements are what we completed in the Excel spreadsheet, right? So that your partner knows, has some idea, right, of what, what to ask you. And that's the, that's the purpose is to get some key terms one being the soundtrack or the, the name of the album, the artist would be a key word, and some relation to your uh, a personal experience. It could be a feeling, an emotion, it could be an event, it could be a relationship with someone. But the idea is to capture key terms from that one sentence statement. And uh, yesterday I explained and showed an example of how to do that. And again, most of... Uh, several of you sent me messages with your examples, and uh, for the most part, everyone had the right idea, right? Is to try to get key terms and then think of the question words, what you might ask. Okay, so we'll talk about that a little bit more here uh, a little bit later today. But let's get into the song. And uh, this is a really cool song. I, I was a big fan of the Cranberries back in the day. Uh, I still like the group. And uh, this was recommended by Jazz. And Jazz, I don't know if you have any comments, uh, anything you want to share about about the song or why you chose the song. Well, I always like uh, all the songs uh, of this band, but this in a special talks about uh, accepting yourself and. Uh, taking like the best decisions in your life. That's why I like this song a lot. And how long have you been a fan of uh, the Cranberries? I like uh, five years ago, more or less. When I listened Zombie in the radio, I fell in love okay. <laughs> with this band. Yeah, that was my question. How did you get uh, turned on to them? You just heard it on the radio. Did you have any anyone else uh, that that liked the group, or was it just listening to them and that was it? That was enough. Well, I was in a trip with my family, and my uncle turned on the radio, and I listened to the song, and I fell in love. And well, in my family, I only know that my dad likes. Uh, this band, <laughs> no one else. Did you know that your father liked the group before you started liking the group, or, or not, or was it after you became a fan? Uh, it was after I was uh, doing the chores in my house, and I played the song "Linger," and my dad was like, "Oh, uh, I like this song," and he started singing the song, and I was like, "Oh." My dad likes the same band as me. <laughs> so he became a fan be, be, after, because you became a fan. Is that right? Well, no. 
he likes uh, before I I listen to the group. Ah, okay. All right, well, that's interesting. All right, so thank you for sharing that, Jez. And so let's take a listen. And there's a couple of things I want to do here. We're, we'll listen to the song. And as you're listening to the song, I've included in the link, there's a Word document with the lyrics. The video itself also has the lyrics. But I'd like for you to open up the Word document. You can find it in the general channel under Files. There's a music folder. And in the title of the Word document, I think it says Analyze by the Cranberries. All right, so go ahead and open up that Word document on your computer. And let's give a listen. It's a cool video too with all the, the pictures there of the group. Um, so what I'd like to do now, guys, in the Word document, all right, we'll, we'll um, actually going to listen to the song again. And before we really talk about the meaning of the song, all right, if you're opening up the document and looking at the lyrics, remember that lyrics to songs, a lot of times it's uh, fi they use figurative language, right? They use metaphors, similes, uh, a lot of different examples, different types of figurative language. But sometimes they also use literal language. So what I'd like to do, I want to listen to the song again, but as we're listening to the song, I want you to choose one line from the lyric. If you look at the bottom of the document, all right, and there's a list of, it just says name, the word name, right? So I'd like for you to choose and replace the word name with your name. And underneath your name, I'd like for you to copy and paste one line that you particularly like, right, from the song. Try to choose a, a, a line that is figurative, that is not literal, right? Again, it could be a metaphor, a simile, it could be personification. I right? choose one line that you think that you particularly like, and then underneath the line, I'd like for you to complete the following prompt. It's like when, right? So I'd like for you to, in your own words, finish this prompt and explain literally what that line means. Okay, so it's like when someone does this, or it's like when I do this, or it's when so-and-so does this, right? To put into your own words the literal sense, the literal meaning of, of the line. All right, and it's it's best to choose a line that is figurative, that's not literal. Even though it may sound literal, you want to choose a line that is uh, that is figurative, so that you can interpret what's the meaning of that line for you. All right, so we'll listen to it one more time as we uh, write out the lines um, that have a special meaning that is significant to you. All right, so let's listen to it one more time. Anyone want to share their, their line and your interpretation? Got some really good ideas here. If you want to read your line from the lyric and then your interpretation with the prompt, it's like when... Any volunteers? Okay, me. Okay, go for it. Mm, the line say, don't go that way. Don't live that way. And I put, in my opinion, it, it talked about not having to follow the path that everyone followed and try to live your life in your way. Right. Yeah, that's that's good. I think a lot of people can relate to those situations, right? Where maybe you feel confined based on societal uh, influences and maybe norms, right? Very good. Thank you. Uh, anyone else want to share their line and interpretation? You're
Anybody else want to share their line? Just jump right in. I would like to do so, but I haven't done, <laughs> I haven't uh, chosen um, the line, so. Ah, okay. Well, if you have something, yeah, just jump in. We have some really good ideas here. Anybody else want to uh, jump in? Carlos, you want to share your, your thoughts? Teacher. Teacher. Yes. Uh, I didn't write it, but I know like what I want to say. Okay. Uh, the part of the song that, that says, don't analyze, don't analyze, uh, I think like if you analyze too much, you're not happy. Yeah, have you guys ever been in that situation? Like what and what what uh, what did it you know what how was it? How did it feel? What was the situation where you analyzed you overthought something? Mm -hmm. Could be an example of that. But do I have to write it, teacher? There in the document? Well, if you if you want to write it, that's fine. It'd be nice to write it so that everyone can share and see others other interpretations, other ideas. Okay. What would be an example? And it can be a personal example or just a hypothetical. But what would be an example of like overanalyzing something? Maybe it's something you've seen in your your experience. For example, teacher, uh, when you like break up a relationship with your best friend, and you 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 start like to analyze what you did like wrong, or or she or he, and you don't stop thinking of, about it, and you you're not happy because you are like in the past. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, it could also be like when, I don't know if this has happened, it can, it can go both ways. It could be a positive thing or a negative thing, but maybe some, some couple or some person is overanalyzing uh, a relationship, whether or not to like the person or not, and they overanalyze it to the, to the degree that they don't end up making the best choice. Right, because maybe there's pressure. They overanalyze it. There's a lot of like you don't want to upset somebody, right? It seems like every choice you make, you're going to upset somebody, right? So it's like, well, what do I do? I you're you're going back and forth between, well, who should I not upset, or who am I going to upset based on this decision that I'm about to make, right? And sometimes it's a difficult situation. That's what comes to mind when I listen to the lyrics too. Yeah. And it could be also after, like Tanya was mentioning, after the relationship, you might keep thinking and dwelling on, oh, did I make the right decision or not? And you're kind of back and forth, wishy-washy, thinking, well, what, did I do the right thing or not? Okay, anybody else want to share their ideas? Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead. Uh, well, I choose the the line uh, that says uh, that will paralyze your evolution. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, I think I didn't write anything. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, but I think that uh, uh, thinking what the lines before said, if you analyze or so uh, a situation more that you have to do it. You can you can't live like um, uh, being free. I think if you are thinking on your life how to do the things, uh, and you are afraid uh, to just to do it, you know, uh, huh? you can't evolution like a uh, like a person, you know, uh -huh. because a, a a person uh, 
has a growth if if she or he has mistakes but because you can learn about them so if you are just analyzing 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 your uh, your actions uh, and you want to do it uh, all like right mm -hmm. uh, you can grow you can have a grow like a person i think that it's the meaning <laughs> yeah no i think uh, i think you're right i think that's a good interpretation it's like if you're analyzing all the time you can't grow right even if like you said if you make mistakes that's part of learning that's part of the lived experience is recognizing our mistakes the things we've made and try to learn from those mistakes and how can you learn from those mistakes if you're not analyzing if you're analyzing all the time right you're not you're not living you're just overthinking everything and worrying about what everybody else say yeah that's a good point great thank you anybody else anybody else want to share their interpretation of a line <laughs> me okay um i choose the line that says we are free we can be wide open and i think that it is when you can do whatever you want maybe when you want to have a relationship and the society doesn't accept it Absolutely. Right. It could be, it could be a relationship. It could be just about anything. It could be even professional, right? If you want to pursue some job and let's say that it's not part of the societal norms, maybe it's not typical for, uh, for someone with your background to go into that profession, right? It could also mean that you're open, you're free to try to do whatever that you want. I think that's a, a very good message, not just from a relational standpoint, but also a professional standpoint, right, as well. It's to try to break the norms. And, you know, it could also be societal. It could also be familiar in terms of just your local family or even a local, very local uh, situation, not just uh, from a country standpoint, but maybe a city. <laughs> Cities have their own culture. States have their own culture sometimes. So it, uh, there's a lot of different societal norms and perspectives that could be applicable, that could apply to this situation. Yes, good thoughts, good ideas. Very good. Thank you, Guy. Anybody else want to jump in? Anybody else want to share their interpretation? Yeah, Luis Enrique, you've got some good ideas. Carlos, Yaisha, feel free to jump in if you would like. Jacqueline. Nelly, if you want to jump in, go right ahead. Anybody else? But it's quiet this morning. Teacher. Go ahead. Um, I'm also choose the line that says that will paralyze your evolution. Mm -hmm. And um, I understand it like if you um, start, um, I don't know how to say it acting como actuando mm -hmm. eh, in a different way and um, like um, imitando another person and um, you stop um, being yourself and it means your evolution i don't know something ah, yeah. like yeah that. yeah that's that's a good thought right if you're trying to be someone you're not right it's hard um, to yes. grow right it's hard to to grow and learn because it, you're not yourself from the very beginning. You're you're trying you're acting. You're trying to be like someone else, and that could be yeah. that could be from any kind of relationship, 
could be from a romantic relationship or friendship, even even within the family. If those expectations, if you feel, no, I've got to be someone I'm not because I'm afraid for whatever reason, right? That could that's gonna hurt your growth. The only way you can you can grow is to be yourself. Very good. Very yes. good insight. Thank you, Susie. Anybody else? It could be the same line. Maybe you have a slightly different interpretation. I choose, uh, we will pray. We will stay wide open. Um, and and I think it means uh, we could be strong, uh, even though if life is not going well, if we have uh, uh, such a bad life, for mm -hmm. example, uh, uh, it is not like an obstacle to to be strong, to um, yeah, to to be strong. Yeah, um, it, it, this is an interesting line too, right? Because we will pray and then we will stay wide open. We will pray. Uh, it says for me what that first part that says we will pray. For me means that we're going to try we, like it's a struggle like it's actually difficult to stay open it's maybe it's difficult to be yourself right and you know so that's but yeah that's a good point Adan, is really looking at those two that we will pray and then we will stay wide open meaning that yeah you're still trying to be yourself even though when maybe life is not going well or maybe you're just feeling pressure for me this song screams like pressure like outside pressure right in in any form whatever that form happens to be that someone is trying to get through life and grow as a person but there's a lot of outside influences that are being uh, a part of that person's life okay very good Adan, thank you Anybody else? Do one more. Um, me. Okay. Well, um, I chose for you opening my eyes to the beauty I see. Uh -huh. uh, okay. For me, it's like when you realize of the important things in the life. Uh, maybe when you change uh, your perspective uh, about yourself, like um, when you. Uh, realize of the good abilities or aspects that you have because sometimes we're a little bit uh, negative in some situations so um, for me is is that mm -hmm. <laughs> when you change your your perspective about uh, the different um, positive um, situations <laughs> yeah that's that's a really good thought uh, Monica that's a really good insight and it's this idea that you become aware of a be of something beautiful but from what someone else like someone else helped you see that which I think is is a great thing in in one sense right because you have someone who is helping you see something that maybe you didn't see on your own right so that's uh, that's yeah, that's a powerful line there. Great. Thank you, Monica. All right, guys. Um, I want to leave some time the rest of today to for you to finish your interview. And I wanted to um, I don't know if you remember when I first started to talk with Jazz at the beginning before we listened to the song, we had a, a discussion. We had a conversation. And I was asking her questions. And I was basically interviewing her. And if you recall that the conversation went back and forth. And I started general, started talking about why she chose the song. That's pretty general. And it got specific to her discussing her father's um, experience or feelings about the song and, and comparing and having a discussion about both her and her father and 
liking this song. And so this is what I want you to think about when you're preparing for your interview with your partner is remember the things we talked about in terms of your interview having a beginning, a middle, and an end. Remember that your questions should go from the general to the specific. Remember that you want to try to include setups like we did last week. Remember to have a setup that includes some context, right? Maybe you even share something personal about yourself within the setup and then deliver the question, then transition into the question. Remember that one of the techniques, one of the ways to go from the general to the specific is to also include follow-up questions. Now, a follow-up question is going to be based on something, some information that your interviewee provides you. When I was talking with Jazz, I was listening for some information that I could turn around and ask another question to get more specific information. That's how I got from why did you choose this song to her discussing her father's uh, feelings and beliefs about this, this song or his, his interest or his likes about this song. So these are um, different ways that I want you to think about when you're preparing for your interview. Let me open up the notion real quick, try to make this quick so you can spend the rest of today preparing. But I, I, I want you to really try to be prepared. Now, when I say be prepared, I, I want you to not write out any questions. Try not to write out any questions. Try not to, to write out any full sentences. You can write out, again, word or short phrase outlines that, um, that can help you, but try to avoid writing out any prepared answers. We want to try to make this as spontaneous and conversational as possible. Let me open up. Uh, this was yes. Let's see. That was no. Let's take a look at. We want yesterday. See. All right, so remember that yesterday we talked about these points, and so it might be worth reviewing these again uh, so that you're prepared to do a, a good interview, right? Both as the interviewer and as the interviewee. Now, a lot is going to be on the interviewer. All right, so the interviewer has got uh, the, the main responsibility in, in carrying on the conversation. All right, so if your interviewee doesn't have a lot to say, you have to be prepared to keep it going, keep the, the conversation going. All right, so I would recommend everyone take another look at these points that we talked about yesterday. And I, I've reviewed most of them here just, just now generally, um, but but we want to have a good performance. Finally, the last thing I'll say is I would recommend that everyone try to do the interview twice at least. This is a performance, so try to think of the first time that you do it as kind of a practice run, and then try it again. Even though the second or even third or however many times you want to do it, you're, you're going to know the, the questions, right? That's okay. And you might even change or modify or change the questions as the interviewer if you're doing it multiple times. But I highly recommend that you try to do it multiple times, okay? It should last around 10 to 12 minutes total for both interviews. So uh, we've got about an hour left here today in class. Hopefully you'll be able to do it at least twice, maybe three times, depending on how much time you need to prepare. Um, although I'm giving you time in class to complete this, of course, if you need time outside of class, that's fine. But please try to get a good recording. Uh, some of you have really soft voices, so make sure that 
you're projecting your voice that maybe you're speaking a little bit louder than you're you're comfortable with, right? But it really makes a big difference when we're listening back to your conversation. Remember, this should be a conversation, and we want to try to uh, continue the conversation. If you if you don't understand the question, then ask, can you please repeat the question? Or I don't understand when you say this. What do you mean by this? So it's a conversation back and forth. Help each other and try to keep it as as fluid as possible. Any questions, guys, about the the activity? Me, teacher. Yes, go ahead. Uh, well, uh, 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 <laughs> um, well, my partner uh, chose the soundtrack of Aladdin, and well, I have questions about how to how to structure my interview. I actually um, did what you well. Well, you did. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, she wrote a sentence, and so I I uh, chose that sentence, and then I go. I chose the K words like you, okay. and well, uh, I just did exactly what you. Uh, I put what, why, uh, who, yes, mm -hmm. and. Um, I want to know if I, for example, I, at uh, the first time I, I have to ask in general, uh, why did you like Aladdin or what is your favorite song of Aladdin or uh, something like that? You, yeah, you, you can like, so when you begin the interview, you mm -hmm. can, um, begin by, you know, thanking the person for taking the time, right? So you can kind of have like a little introduction kind of a just a, a greeting you know and then when you begin certainly you can you can start that general but i want you to think specifically about the setup that mm -hmm. that you can include and the setup coming from the the statement that they had the musical concept statement um yeah you could say something like okay i i know that you like this and you said this, right? And and then think about, you know, it, it really just depends on how you want to frame the first question. But mm -hmm. take something from the musical statement, the, the the concept statement, right? And include that in the setup. And then then you can deliver the question. So here, here's the thing, like if you begin with a really general question you could begin like with a, a super general question here's the thing it there's a lot of different ways that you can do it and i don't want to tell you that everyone should do it the same because i don't want everyone to do exactly the same thing i want it to be more spontaneous but to answer your question yes you can do that uh should you do that should everyone do that no not necessarily and and so there's just so many different ways that you can do it. I just don't want everyone, I don't want all the interviews to sound exactly the same, uh, if you know what I mean. Yes, teacher. Right, so I think you're on the right track. I think you're, you, you're, you're doing what you know, I would do, thinking about how you want to start. But you might make the, the decision right in the middle of the conversation. Like even though you're planning all of these these questions or you know these ideas to ask about, right? It's very likely that when you're discussing and you're you're talking about the the information and you're setting up the question that you might in the last minute change your mind and 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 ask ask a question either in a different way or you might even ask a completely different question. This is why I want you to try to do it at least twice with your partners so that you experiment try different ways of of conducting the interview and, and even answering the questions try to find different ways to express yourself and and see how see what happens and then you can choose at the end you and your partner can choose okay which performance is our best performance all right 
Yes, that, does that help? Yes. <laughs> okay. Teacher. Teacher. Yes. Uh, today is the last day to record the, re the interview. Um, I would like to, uh, this will be the last day that we, that we talk about it and spend time in class. Uh, tomorrow, okay. we'll, we'll do some other things. So yes, try to, to complete this task sometime today, if not in class today, uh, later today. Teacher, because I want to ask you if you can review our guide document. We already finished. Okay, which, uh, Five. which group are you in? Five. Five? Five. The, uh, yeah, that one. All right, so what I would recommend is to not ask questions. I'm going to I want to show you an example um and I don't remember groups, but like uh, uh Fernando, can I open up your example? I don't know if Fernando's here. <laughs> Uh, which group are you in, Fernando? Uh, group four. Uh, let's see, group four. So I don't know, uh, Tanya, if you saw my example yesterday, but I, I basically went through a process, and this is what I would recommend everyone doing, is I would include the musical concept statement that comes from the, the Excel spreadsheet and include that at the very top of your guide. This is your objective, right, is to really get uh, answers to that, quest, to that statement, right, to get more information. So this will, I think, be helpful uh, if you have the statement at the very top. So the idea here is to create an outline and you'll notice in this case what he's done is he's taken this information is coming directly from the musical concept statement from the Excel spreadsheet. Right? Again, it would be easier to see here to be able to look at both. But these words, the, the moment in the cinema with her friends. Okay, so what he's doing, he's saying, okay, this is interesting. Something about, oops, spending time with uh, the friends at the cinema, at the movies. So he's mentioned here experience. He's going to say he wants to find out when it happened, how it happened, and where it happened. Notice he's not writing out any questions. And in that same statement, they mentioned the Joker movie. So you can ask some questions about... The Joker, it could be question, and that's that could be anything. It could be anything about the movie itself, um, and or his relationship to that movie, right? And so he's he already has some ideas about what he wants to ask. He has a what question and a why question related to the relationship of the movie and her, but he could also ask questions specific about about the movie, right? And and then ask what he or she thinks about those situations from the movie. A lot of different ways to do it. Now, he also has about the soundtrack and her life, right? So notice here he's broken it down, process how she liked it, connection with something else, influence of the soundtrack. Use. So he is just writing out some ideas, right? And certain question words that he thinks are relevant to those points. But again, notice, no questions are, are written out, right? Because when he begins now to interview his interviewee, right, this is going to be more spontaneous. And he doesn't have to start here, even though this is at the very top, right? He could start anywhere in here, you know, and he could check off as he goes through and he's, he's conducting his interview. He can go and make notes to himself in real time during the conversation, Right to either you know omit something like ignore it or ask more questions, right? And and he doesn't even have to ask all of these things. This is just something that is um, it's a guide to give him something to ask about, 
and he doesn't have to cover all of it. And that's very important. When you guys are doing your interviews, don't feel like you have to complete everything that you wrote in the guide. That doesn't, that doesn't make necessarily a good interview. A good interview is one that's conversational, number one, and number two, provides a lot of good information, a lot of good detailed information. So, yeah. yeah. For example, teacher, it, when I'm, I have like to, to get the main ideas and to, to write just like keywords, like what I want to know for, from, right, and keywords that, that come well, from, well, are, yeah, go ahead. The soundtrack, for example, if, if los perros profe no se callen, o sea, Acá fuera, sorry. Um, bueno, o sea, while we are in the interview, we can be like talking and he replays me and if, if about that question, I, I do another one, it's okay? Yeah, you, you need to do follow-up questions, right? So if, um, if Fernando's going to ask a question about the Joker movie, Right. And they and she says something like, you know, she says that she relates to the Joker movie or something. He can follow up and ask more detailed questions that aren't on here, that aren't on the, the, the guide, depending on what the interviewee says. Those are called follow up questions. And that's going to be just off the top of your head as you're listening i want you to always listen and say okay que mas puedo preguntar? What, what else can i ask when they're telling me things right and you just keep going until you finally say okay there's nothing more to talk about here on this topic i'll go on now to my next topic yes but you definitely want to do follow-up questions remember we're going to have setup questions where you provide information before the question and then follow-up question. Those are going to be questions that come after questions based on the answer. Okay? Sure. All right, you're yeah. welcome. And I wanted, to, I, want, I wanted to tell you about uh, the program thing. I don't know if you can help me. I'm sorry, about the what? The program. You, you told me a message that I tell you in all in class. Uh, I'm sorry, Tanya, you were cutting out a little bit. Uh, can you type it into the chat, what you're asking about? Yes, yeah, teacher. Teacher, I already wrote it. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, that's right. Okay, the flip grid, right. Um, all right, so... You tried to access it on your computer, right? In your browser? Okay. And it didn't pick up the audio. Yeah. Just the, the video. Okay. And you checked your connection to the... Oh, man. Hmm. Can you... Let's see. All right, have you tried this? Have you tried to record like you used to, record on your uh, cell phone, just a, a video, and then from your computer, from your browser, open up Flipgrid, and instead of recording within Flipgrid, I think there's an option to import the, a video that you've already created on your computer. Have you tried that? You know what I mean? I to do it. Uh, you said like in the browser, like. Yeah. So okay. So I'm I'm sharing my screen, right? Can you see my screen? Yes. All right. So let me show you what I mean here. See. Hello. Hello, guys. Do you have a question? Yes, teacher. I have a question. Um. I, I don't know the the point that says the configurations of the questions. I don't know what do you mean 
with that. Okay, what are you, uh, are we, are you talking about the list in Notion with the list of things to, to do? Or? Yes. And what number is that? Let me see. Is the number. Do you see my screen? Can you uh, find it on my screen? Yes. Mm, I think it's the poem for. I the interviewers ask questions that allow the interviewee to provide rich description. All right. So what this means is there's two parts. All right. The first is the interview includes a setup. So remember last week we worked and we talked a lot about beginning before you ask a question to provide some information, some context about uh, some ideas that relate to the question that you're going to ask. So this is the same idea is in this interview, you want to begin speaking and talking about some ideas right before you jump into the question. The second point deals with what's called follow-up questions. Follow-up question is a question that is based on the answer that your interviewee gives you. So you're going to be talking, and or they're going to be talking, and they're going to answer a question that you asked. And when they are answering, you might be thinking, well, I need to ask another question based on what she, what she just told me. I'm going, to, I'm going to ask another question, but it's going to be directly linked to the answer that the interviewee just mentioned. And so in that way, you're getting more detailed information. These are called follow-up questions because you're moving from the general to the specific, but you're getting a lot of description, a lot of perspective by asking follow-up questions. If you don't ask any follow-up questions, you're not likely to get a lot of good, rich description and perspective. Okay, so we want to try to do both. Have setups for each question and then include at least one follow-up question, maybe two or three, depending on how the conversation is going, depending on how your interviewee is responding. Let me give you an example. If you ask a question about a movie and 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 they say the only thing they say is oh yeah i like it yeah yeah it's a good movie well they didn't really give you any information right so you have to follow up questions well okay so what did you like about the movie oh i liked it because it was scary well what part did you think was scary well when they did see and so you're getting more and more information by by using follow-up questions. Okay, does that does that make sense? Is the the same strategy like the video of flip grips of the famous person? Like the video of part of yeah, number message? one is yes, the first part, the setups, yes. Yes. All right. But we didn't talk last week about follow-up questions. We just talked about setup. You didn't do any follow-up questions because you didn't even uh, weren't listening for the answer. So last week we were just practicing on the setups. But yes, it's it's just it's the same. You want to provide some information before the question instead of just just asking a question with no setup. You want to talk about the concept and 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 say a few words. So that you can provide some, yeah, some context, and then transition to the question. But the follow-up questions are different. The follow-up questions come after the the answer. They're they're based on answers. That makes sense. Anything that they say, you're thinking, okay, ¿qué más puedo preguntar desde lo que está diciendo? And then you're going to come back with another question. And, Okay, and I have another question about what time it is for the video. Is okay, here at the top. 10, 10 to, to 15 minutes? Yeah, for, for both interviews, for both. Each interview should be around five to six minutes. 
um, for the the interview of me and the Stefana. What time? Five to six minutes. No, in total. So you're gonna ask. You're gonna interview Stefana, and Stefana is gonna interview you, right? Yeah. All right. So your interview. That is, you asking the question should last around five to six minutes. Estefana's uh, questioning should also last five to six minutes. So in total, we need one video with both interviews that should last around 10 to 12 minutes. Oh, in, in the one video? In one the, video. Both interviews and the time is... 10 to 12 minutes. That's right. So oh. you're, you're going to start. One of you will start first, all right? So if Stefana starts, she'll interview you first, okay? And it should last around five minutes. And she's just going to keep asking you questions, and you're going to answer. And, and then once you're finished, when she's finished, all right, just keep track of the time. When she finishes, then it's your turn, and you start asking questions to Stefana for five minutes, five to six minutes. And she has to just answer. It's just you questioning, you questioning. I see. Okay. Mm. And teacher, uh, another question. Um, we can, can we um, send you the video in the afternoon or night? Because in these sure. days I have some problems. Sure, sure, Jackie, no problem. Okay. Yeah, that's that's okay if you need to do it in the afternoon. Thank you. Just work it out. Yeah, just work it out with Stefana that you that you're both in agreement that you both can do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it because in these days um, I had some problems in my family? Sure, that's no problem, Jackie. Just again, make sure that you and Stefana can work it out. And uh, that there's no problem with you coordinating your schedules. That's no problem. Yes. And I want to share my screen, teacher. Okay. Um, is is why I want I want um, I want to say me if my my outline is okay. Okay. If you want, Jackie, I can just open it up here. Um, I'm in, I'm in the, uh, group nine. Oh, but you, did you upload it, Steph, uh, Jackie? Yes, it's in the week. Because all I see is Estefanas. Yes. No lo veo. No? No, it's not más Estefanas. Dice que interview, ah, wait, no, the interview with Estefana, es tuyo? Ah, yes, perdón, perdón, not. sí, sí. Entonces faltan Estefana, ¿no? Stefana, ¿ya subiste tu la guía? No. Hay que, hay que no. subirlo, por favor. Okay, what I would recommend, guys, um, is putting, like in your case, Jackie, I would put Stefana's music concept statement from the Excel spreadsheet, and I would put that at the top of your interview just so that it reminds you what, what's the, the main point here that you're trying to find out in your interview. Okay. Um, and what I would do, and I don't see, I don't have, so, este vienen de su, su frase, verdad? All the, the, yes. all the bring places, yeah, my bring mm -hmm. places? Yes. Okay. I think. All right. A ver. I'm going to share my screen then. And I'm going to open up, we'll come back to your interview. Let me, let me open up. All right, so I'm going to copy and paste her statement. I'll go back to group nine. All right, so I'm just going to paste it here in your guide. All right now. All right, so, so what you want to do is, all right, I, I like what you did here, all the bright places soundtrack, okay? So that's a key word. Uh, bright places, 
All right, that's good. Um, I teach that always anywhere can be beautiful. All right, for me, this is also a very important point. Uh, something that teaches anywhere can be beautiful. That idea, like... I would include that as a main point, maybe instead of like inspires you or, or, or maybe it's related to remind you maybe, but, but I would write out this idea of, of teaching. What does it mean to teach her in this case that anything can be beautiful? You know what I mean? So I would have three key points. I would have the soundtrack, um, maybe the soundtrack itself, and then the second, maybe what what it means to be what what is a bright place, and then a third, uh, it's something about teaching something to be beautiful, or always teaching her to be beautiful, or something like that. Oh. And then I think if you can try to have at least two question words. Um, because if you only have one question word, it's probably not worth asking about, right? You want to have mm -hmm. at least two, and really the more the, the better, at least in the planning, right? It's so that you say, well, look, I, there's a lot of things I want to know about the soundtrack, when it happened, why, where, what, right, and so on. But, yeah, you've got the idea. I would just maybe... Consider this last point of something about teaching her to always be beautiful, something along, or anywhere, anything can be beautiful, maybe, um, so that you can get a better understanding what she means by, by that that uh, statement. Okay. All right. Yes, I think that's it, teacher. Okay, Thank Estefana, do you have any uh, questions? No. No? All right. Well, I'll go ahead and hang up, guys. If you have any other questions, then uh, just let me know. Yes, teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Juan, I don't know if you can hear me. Um, I want to talk about your situation. Yes, I'm here. Uh, Juana, yeah. Uh, uh, Paulina. Um, so, look, uh, the, what I was saying is if you can find, I don't know if everyone else has a partner, There, you know, if there's anyone else who ha doesn't have a partner, or if you can ask a team to to join and do kind of a three-way three, three -way interview instead of a two-way interview. Well, um, I don't have a problem to make it myself, but... Yeah, I was just I was asking what's up and nobody answered me. So, is there? I don't know how to say it. Okay. Um. Like I can do it by my own. I um, but I, I don't know if you like if you want to. Um, like, si tengo que tener a fuerzas una pareja o no. Well, that that's the yeah. You have to have a partner because it has to. It has to. You have to ask someone else. Um, all right. Can you find? Do you have anyone uh, that you socialize with, either a family member or a friend that speaks that speaks English? Mm, I have a, a friend that wants to help me because I commend him. And he says, oh, yeah, um, I can help if you want. Well, if you can, if you can coordinate that with, with that person, and, and, um, but he's also going to have to ask you questions as well. Yes, so, like I say, I say to him that um, he can be like the um, entrevistador y yo la, pues, la que responda más que nada. Sí, tiene que ser los dos. Es decir, tú vas, tienes que preguntar a, a esta persona y él tiene que, eh, tiene que preguntar a ti también. Ah, bueno. Sí, creo que sí. Sí se va a poder. Sí. Bueno, este, so see if you can arrange that and uh, still try to include your, 
uh, musical statement concept in this Excel spreadsheet and just put the, the person's first name or whatever just so that I, I know kind of what's going on, you know. Okay. Thank All right. You. Okay. Sure. You, all righty. You're welcome. Um, can you just like give me a recap about what what does it have to like include the the interview? All right. I'm going to include here um, a link to the Notion spreadsheet. The the comments here. This is what we talked about yesterday. I want you to yes. look at it first. And then let me know if you have any questions. It says, what makes a good semi-structured interview? And yes, I'll, there... I have seen it. Okay, I'm going to read them and yeah. Yeah, Thank just you. read it. Yeah, go through it. And then if you have questions, certainly ask. But um, the first two points are really important because it needs to last 10 to 12 minutes, all right, the interview, both, both interviews. So one file with both interviews. Each interview should last around five to six minutes. Both together should last around 10 to 12 minutes. Okay. Thank and, you. Um, and, and obviously the, the, the questions need to be about a, a soundtrack, a movie soundtrack, and what it, some aspect to the person's life or interests. Okay. Okay. So yeah, take a look at that and you let me know if you have any uh, questions. Okay, teacher. All right. Thank you so All right. much. You're welcome. All right, guys, it's 940. We'll go ahead and close today's class. Just a reminder, I was looking through the grades, and uh, there are still many of you that I think will want to change your grade from last week from the famous person activity. I am really looking specifically at the interview questions that you have a setup for each of the questions. Remember that the setup provides context, provides information about what you're about to ask. All right, so instead of asking the question first and then talking about it, talk about it first in the setup and then pose the question. When you ask the question, you're finished. Now you're gonna move on to the next setup, talk about that, and then introduce the second question. This is for the famous person assignment from last week. Now, today, in this activity that we're doing, we're also going to include a setup. The setup should come before the question. The only difference now with this activity is that we're also going to do follow-up questions. So the follow-up question is some, simply a question that comes after another, but it's based on an answer. It's based on something that the interviewee told you you're going to take some of those keywords and turn it around. And you can also include a setup for that. The setup and the follow-up now become kind of one of the same. But the follow-up simply means that you're taking information from what the interviewee mentioned. If you want to look at another example, watch today's recording when I was talking with Jess, asking her about her, rec her song recommendation. I was doing follow-up questions and I was also setting up questions to see if you can identify both. Can you identify when someone is setting up a question? Can you identify a follow-up question? Okay. Um, so try to finish this activity, all right, for, for today, uh, your interviews. Tomorrow, we're going to have a speaking activity like we've done a couple of weeks ago, I think where I'll give you a prompt. I'll give you a minute to think about it, to prepare, and I'll ask for a response. Okay, a one minute response. So we'll do that tomorrow, and then we'll have time tomorrow, if you need to, to work on your podcast, and also any assignments, whether it's this assignment that we're working on today, hopefully you can finish today, or if you need to redo your famous person activity. I'm giving everyone an opportunity, if you don't like your grade in Teacher Ease, to redo, to resubmit the video, the Flipgrid video uh, from last week. The only thing I would ask is that you remove any videos that you don't, that you don't, uh, that you don't want me to grade. Okay, so if you're replacing a video, go ahead and delete the one, you know, that you did last week if you're redoing it. And I'm going to ask that you send me a link in Microsoft Teams so that I can easily, quickly access your, your new video 
and uh, I can find it easily and uh, give you feedback quickly. All right, so any questions about today's activity or any questions about famous person activity from last week? Not the chair. Not the chair. The chair. Yes. Uh, I actually, well, me and my partner finished our interview guide and we want to know if you can uh, check our interview guide, please. Okay. Uh, what group are you in? Uh, in the group, well, we are team six, but we are in the two. Two. All right. Two. All right. I'll, um, we I'll are check. Andy and Fernanda. Okay. I'll check it, uh, right now. I just want to go ahead and close the class. Are there any other questions before we conclude for today? No. No. All right, guys, we'll stop there then. We'll, um, have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll uh, start tomorrow promptly right at 8 o'clock with our uh, speaking activity. All right? All right. See you guys later. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow.